Hello everyone and welcome back to the Dork Side. I'm the Dork in the Road and I'm here in the woods moto camping off of my Adventure Grom and I thought what a great time to answer the question why did you build an Adventure Grom? Well I'll tell you. I'm the Dork in the Road and I want to be your internet writing buddy so please consider subscribing. I've got my notes on my phone so I apologize if I'm looking at it. So when I first bought this Grom back in March, I got so many comments about it. So many very supportive comments, so many people were excited, I really appreciate that. But a lot of people left comments that made it clear that they just didn't understand why I wanted to build an Adventure Grom, what is the point of an Adventure Grom, why would anybody want to take what is essentially a scooter and turn it into an adventure bike or a dual sport. So I thought now that I'm out here on it, you know, putting it to the ultimate test, moto camping off of it, I should talk about a few of my reasons for buying and building an Adventure Grom and uh, put some of those questions to rest maybe once and for all. And, uh, and if you have other questions, you can leave them in the comments if I don't actually answer them. Probably the number one comment that I got a ton of comments was people telling me that a Grom is a terrible off-road bike. It has terrible ground clearance. It has terrible gearing. It has very small tires. It has no suspension travel. And what's funny about all those comments is, I know. <laughs> I know it's not a good adventure bike. I know it's not a good choice for an off-road bike. That's the point. Uh, but that's not the only reason I bought one. I've actually got seven reasons why I bought the Adventure Grom, so let's just roll, run down them one at a time. Number one, I had a 2018 Grom before. Some of you remember that. Some of you OGs that have been around for a while. I had it, I didn't really mod it other than putting an exhaust on it and a few other things. But I rode it, I really enjoyed it, but it just kind of didn't get ridden much. And it was financed and I didn't really want to beat it up or take it out off road or anything like that. And so I ended up just selling it. But a, about a year later, I started really thinking and reminiscing and really missing my old Grom and how much fun it was to ride around town, to be your around town kind of bike, to take it sort of, if you're exploring maybe vacant lots or, you know, sort of urban exploring stuff, it was always really fun for that. And so I got this wild hair and this idea in my head that it would be fun to get a Grom, maybe one that was a little bit more beat up that wasn't as nice and new, and convert it into an off-road Grom, add some mods to it so it would really be a little bit more capable and protected off-road. So the first reason I bought an Adventure Grom is because I miss my old Grom. The second reason is not something that motivates me a ton usually so this might surprise some of you but uh, for the challenge the whole idea that it's a terrible off-road bike that I'm still gonna take off-road is is fun to me is intriguing right it's fun to see what you can do with a bike that is in no way designed for the things that you're gonna do with it it's fun to take on a gravel road like the one I'm sitting off of over here that on the DRZ or the Africa Twin is nothing you could do it with your eyes closed but on the Grom suddenly you feel every bump you got to be aware of those those drops and dips uh, you got to look out for big rocks. I actually dented the heat shield on the exhaust pipe on the way in here. And so it's a little bit more of a challenge and it's more fun to ride this slow bike uh, in places it's not supposed to be and see what I can get it to do. That's fun. It's fun to prove that you don't need a big bike to have a big adventure. And it's fun to push my skills a little bit to see if I'm a good enough rider to take a bike that is not good at what I'm trying to get it to do and still get it to do the things that I want it to do. And that's been really fun to ride this bike very hard and push it very hard, especially on gravel roads and stuff. It is a unique experience and it's very fun to ride. The third reason I wanted an Adventure Grom, it's unique. A lot of people said you should have just gotten a TW200 if you wanted something small and cheap that was fun to ride around town. Absolutely. That is a logical, that choice makes sense. That advice makes sense. But there's a million people out there riding T-dubs in the woods and around town and using them for that purpose. There's not a million people riding adventure groms. There's not a million people riding groms in the woods and going moto camping on them. That's a little bit more unique. And that was part of the reason why I thought it would be fun. And I thought people might be interested because it was something that people hadn't seen before. This moto camping off the grom is very unique. I've only seen a few videos ever of people moto camping off groms and they were not bringing such an elaborate setup. It was much more bare bones and so uh, I wanted to see just how much of my full kit I could get on this bike and I was pretty impressed by what I managed to get out here. Number four, I spend a lot of time riding with newish riders. Lil Dork is one, but I have lots of other friends and people that I ride with that are just getting into the sport. And so it's fun to have a bike that I can take and still ride as hard as I want and not worry about getting out ahead of them or leaving them behind or, or pushing them to do things that maybe they're uncomfortable with. This Grom is way more fun to ride with a slower group than it is to take my DRZ out and ride at it you know, 20% of its capacity. So it's really fun for that. And if you're someone that rides with newer riders, handicapping yourself with a bike that's not quite as capable, but you can ride harder than you would your bike in that situation is fun and I recommend it. 
The number five reason is I wanted to do a build series. I've never done a build series before. I'm not a mechanic. I've said that 10,000 times. Building and working on bikes makes me anxious and videotaping it and sharing it makes me very nervous because I never do anything perfectly. I always screw up. And so it's the most imperfect motorcycling related thing that I do. And so I was very anxious about this idea that I would just be open and honest about the whole build series and really show everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so I wanted to start with a bike that was one, easy to work on, simple. This bike is very simple. It's not much to it at all. Um, two, a bike that was not expensive so that if I messed it up, I was at least not out as much money. Uh, and or a bike that it's, there are lots of replacement parts readily available. It would be easy to replace or get another one of something that I broke or messed up. The Grom also falls into that category. So in terms of a bike for a first build series, it made sense to me to start with something inexpensive. Um, and also that wasn't my primary bike. So if I did screw it up and it was out of commission for a couple weeks because I had to take it to a mechanic, I would still be able to go riding, right? Because I had my other bike. So an additional bike for that made sense to me too. So this was my first build series. I recorded and posted videos of every mod that I put on it. And you can check out that series if you haven't, I'll link it for you. The number six reason and one of the biggest for me is that Groms are really fun. If you've ridden one, you know what I'm talking about, but there's just something about taking a slow bike and riding it as hard as you want all the time and knowing you'll never get in trouble. It is wide open throttle all the time. These are 12 inch wheels. So leaning over in a corner at 35 miles an hour, you feel like a MotoGP racer. It is the most fun bike to just whip around town, riding through town, jumping off curbs, doing dumb stuff like that. In the woods, my feet are firmly planted on the ground. I can reach it easily. You know, if I were to get into a situation where I'm in deep mud, or I got stuck up a halfway up a hill climb. This bike is light. I can just pick it up and move it and do what I need to do with it. So I'm never afraid I'm going to get into something that I can't get out of with the Grom because it's just easy to ride. You can ride it hard and it's super fun. If you've ridden one, you know, and if you think riding a Grom isn't fun, my guess is you haven't ridden one because it's super fun. It's like a mini bike or a freaking go-kart that's legal that you can ride on the road. Those were fun when you were a kid. They're still fun when you're an adult, even though they aren't like the fastest thing on earth. And the seventh and final reason that I bought an Adventure Grom, I think it's funny. 90% of what I do is to amuse myself. And I think an Adventure Grom is hilarious. I think the stupid things I do on it are hilarious. I think the videos I make on it are hilarious. I think the fact that I'm out here in the woods, an hour from home, far from civilization, camping off a freaking scooter is hilarious. It's funny to me. Some of you don't appreciate that piece of it. Some of you don't get why it's funny or why I think it's funny. But like I said, 90% of what I do is to amuse myself. And I'm very amused by this motorcycle. And I've had a great time building it, riding it, and playing with it and making videos on it. And I hope some of you have enjoyed watching them. I hope you've enjoyed the Grom build series. And I hope you enjoy the Grom ventures. Having said that, it's, it's interesting because now that I've moto camped off it, I don't, what else is there to prove on this particular motorcycle? I'd like to take it trail riding maybe, but it's no good for long distance riding because with the gearing the way it is, it doesn't go over 50 miles an hour. So I can get here because I can take back roads the whole way, but anything that required me to take a highway, heaven forbid a freeway, I would not be able to make it happen. So as fun and amusing as this build has been, as fun and amusing as riding this has been, I gotta tell you that the views really aren't there. People aren't as interested in this build and this bike as I thought they would be. That same thing happened with my other Grom and I totally get it. It's not my regular fare. It's not what you guys signed up for, but as much as I love this thing, I don't know what the future holds for it. It's uncertain. We'll see how this video does and if I get a wild hair to do many other things, but it is possible that we could be thinking in other directions. Um, just as an example, Lil Dork is, she's 14 now, which means she'll be 16 before we know it and be able to ride and drive legally um, it would be neat if we had a dual sport bike that she could ride that we could use to go camping on and connect trails and things like that so i don't know this isn't it because we can't take it out on the highway but it would be pretty easy to take this bike and her bike sell them both and turn them into something like i don't know a tw200 or xt250 I don't know. So um, who knows what the future holds? Maybe another build series. Maybe we'll hang on to this for a while. Maybe I'll just love moto camping off it so much it'll become my primary moto camping bike. I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your ideas, what you'd like to see. What would you like to see with the Adventure Grom? Or if the Adventure Grom went away, what else would you like to see? I, a TW200 makes a lot of sense for a little dork, but I definitely can't afford one if I have this in my garage. So I guess if you're super interested in a fully built Adventure Grom, message me and we could talk about it. But it would have to be the right offer. I don't know. But for now, 
I'm enjoying this thing. I've had a great time putting it together. I'm very thankful to my sponsors for this build. Rocky Mountain ATV sponsored this one. Giant Loop sponsored this one. And I'll put a full list of the mods and everything that's running on it in the description if you're curious about the Adventure Grom and how it all came together. And you can check out the playlist too. If you have questions about the Adventure Grom or why I bought it or you don't buy my explanation, that's fine. I get it. Uh, leave them in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about it. But for now, and as always, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. And please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Thank you. Bugs everywhere. Excellent! It is 100% snowing right now. The Adventure Grom is adventuring.